In this video, we will check about SharePoint REST API, how we can use it in SharePoint Online. Uh, as well as we will see some examples, some other factors on this. And then I'll show you how we can get a, a PDF, which will have some examples and the details about the REST API that we are going to discuss now. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Vijay and I am a Microsoft MVP specialized in SharePoint. So now let's get started. So in this video, we are going to see how it is REST, uh, REST API and then how REST API works and uh, uh, what are the HTTP commands that we can use. And then I will show you some examples on the REST API endpoints and what is the advantages that we can get if you will use SharePoint REST API. And then also we will see how we can get uh, or send the uh, digest value uh, that is required uh, where, uh, in, when you are doing some update. And then uh, we will see some examples and uh, we will do a demo on this video, this, this one also on this video. And uh, there will be some other examples you will get in that PDF as well. So, um, so what I've done here is I have uh, created a PDF for the same as I, uh, as I was talking about it. So uh, this PDF will contain everything. It, it, it there is also a blog post for the same. You can go through. I'll put the link in the uh, video description, and then you can get it. So you will get the PDF as well. And uh, uh, so first of all, what is REST API? Uh, now the REST API, um, like we have different different object models which you can use to interact with our SharePoint objects. Um, we have uh, CSAM, we have JSON, we have server side object model as well. Now Microsoft introduced uh, SharePoint REST API in 2013, uh, where we can uh, interact with SharePoint remotely. So uh, your your SharePoint is somewhere, and then you you, uh, you can write your Sharep uh, your code here, and then you can connect with your SharePoint uh, uh, remotely. Now the 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 advantages over here is uh, you will e you will use the open data protocol standard. So SharePoint uh, REST API uh, when you are connecting to your SharePoint sites. In this case, whatever the uh, technology that support REST uh, uh, that support uh, REST web request, then uh, that you can use to um, to to connect to your SharePoint sites. Now. Basically, in this case, uh, what will happen is uh, you will construct a, a RESTful uh, request and using your open data uh, protocol, and uh, then you, you t it will uh, uh, it will you will uh, you, you will connect with your uh, SharePoint site, or you can get or you can even uh, do the insert update all these things. Now, if I'll give you a small example on this, so uh, let's say purely if you are working on SharePoint client object model, then Let's say we use list dot get by title and then the list name. This will give you the particular list. Uh, but in case of your uh, SharePoint REST API, then you can use uh, your SharePoint site URL, uh, then slash underscore API slash list, and then slash your get by title is the method, and then you can provide the list name in 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 quote in uh, in single quote or double quote, and it will give uh, uh, it will give you the list particular list. So this is how you can actually uh, uh, you can actually uh, work with uh, SharePoint REST API. This is a small example. The same way, let's say you want to retrieve all the list items. So for example, I have an employee list, and you can see here get items. I will use dot get items. This is a method which will give you all the items from that particular list. The same thing we can do here, like uh, you know uh, underscore API slash list slash get by title your list name slash items. So uh, here till underscore API your site name slash underscore API. For example, in this case, if you'll see here, this is uh, uh, this is my REST API uh, till your site and URL and then underscore API slash list then get by title and then this is your list name and then slash item. So it will give you all the items. Now uh, next thing is if you'll see here now what internally happens is your uh, let's say uh, look at this example this is the diagram that i have taken from msdn uh, now there is a apps or solution 
and uh, then on this if you will see here you are your rest code is there and then you will uh, you will do a http request and then it will internally call the client.spc web service which will internally call to server object model and your server object model will interact with your container database or your sharepoint and then it will give you the required data in json or atom format um, so internally it will again it will call all these things so your server object model will get called but as uh, we will not feel that so we will just pa pass a http uh, uh, request now meanwhile if you are interested for sharepoint you can click on this url you will check the sharepoint training courses i have so you will also get a uh, get a um, url where you can access the entire course as well now um, so now next next one is the http commands that we uh, we require for example normally if you will work with your sharepoint then you will do some uh, in short update or create delete like this operations so there are various http requests that we can do for example if you want to retrieve something if you want to read the data then you can use a http get request similarly if you want to add or update then you can use the http post request you want to update uh, the existing resources then you can use http put request and uh, uh, if you want to delete then uh, then you can use http delete so uh, these are quite uh, uh, quite understandable for how it is so for example if you want to create a list then uh, since it's a create request or you are adding something then in that case it will be a post request now here are few of the things that i have added here when you will use the post command what will happen and then uh, how you can use the put and merge thing so what will happen on that is uh, so uh, when you will actually uh, the merge request then uh, all the settings uh, of these properties will be optional so uh, any properties that you do not explicitly uh, um, uh, provide then it will set the uh, current property so this way you can uh, you can check out some of the additional things on this now um next thing is uh, how we can uh, construct that url that is what is known as the rest endpoint as well so for example um let's say uh, there is a client object model we want to retrieve the list so i'll say client context dot web dot list and in this case actually as i said your url uh, site url slash underscore api slash web slash list so it will give you the list so there are certain um, um, these parameters are available this uh, reference guide is available in msn as well you can check out this uh, i have also added some reference urls which contains various examples that you can also go through and uh, this code will work for uh, uh, for SharePoint online as well as SharePoint on premises also. So you will not have any um, any differences. Only thing is your site URL. Else other things will be same. So your if you have written a REST code which is working on your SharePoint on premises, then the same code will work on the SharePoint online as well. Only thing is you need to update your uh, uh, URL. Now similarly there is uh, REST endpoints for user profile search publishing all these things are there now let's uh, let's just see some of the uh, particular examples which you usually work every day for example you want to retrieve the wave title or something then if you'll see here and then slash wave and then title so it will give you the current whatever the wherever you are using this code that wave title only so if i'll give only till slash web then i can access all the properties but if i will put slash title then i'll only it will give me the property which is title now similarly the next one if you'll see here it will give me all the list and libraries which are presented in the sharepoint site and the second one if you'll see here it will provide the items from a particular list so that's the reason we are using get by title and then providing the list title so remember this is the title of the list and similarly if you want to retrieve only the title of the particular list then you can see here you can put a question mark select equal to title so it will only select the title property of that sharepoint list now what the advantages you will get it is uh, when you don't need to really do any reference uh, of to your sharepoint libraries so if you are using uh, uh, javascript object model then your sp.js should be there in the page then only you will be able to interact with your sharepoint site but in this case um, it will not you don't need any references for that so you uh, all you need is the http rest endpoint 
and uh, um, yeah, as I was telling, you know, this the SP dot chase file which is required, but in this case it is not required. Um, and REST API, another uh, advantage you will get is that if you'll actually put the REST URL in the browser, then you will be able to see all these properties on the browser itself. You don't really uh, require any other, uh, um, uh, you can immediately see the output in that browser itself. I'll show you that. And then this is one thing that we require when we are doing a post or update operation, we need to pass the uh, form digest value that you can just write this line of code so that it will uh, it, it will uh, understand that this is the request is coming from a safe page. Now there are certain examples that I have uh, provided here. Uh, before that, you can use your SharePoint REST API code in normally uh, you can use the popular uh, you know um, uh, code injection approach. You can use a script editor web part or a content editor web part. You can write your code over there. That's one thing you can do. The other thing is you can use SharePoint hosted apps uh, or the add-ins uh, and you can use the code over there. In this particular example, what I will do is I will show you how we can do this thing in 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 a in a uh, script editor web part in a classic SharePoint site. So now if you'll see here, uh, I, I want to retrieve the user display name from of the particular SharePoint site. So this will be the logged in user uh, display name. Now in this case, I have taken a button. So these are HTML code. Remember, you should have some HTML knowledge for that. So this is a HTML button. You can see here, I have a, a button click event for, which is attached to that particular uh, button. And then that's the reason I'm using the uh, jQuery library here. You can see here uh, because this is this code is a jQuery code. And then uh, we will retrieve uh, the user ID by using underscore SP page context info. This JavaScript variable will give you a lot of properties on that. And uh, there's two properties we are using here. One thing is the user ID and the other one is the web absolute URL. So it will give you the SharePoint URL because I don't want to hard code that this is my uh, URL. So it will take uh, your URL because this code, let's say if you hard code it, then once you take this code, from one server to another server you have to actually change the url if you have hard coded in this case you don't need to hard code it so it will take uh, the current url it will take the current url and then slash uh, underscore api wave slash then get user by id this is the method and it will take the id which we retrieve, retrieve here and then um, then there is a request header that we need to pass your accept application slash json over data verbos and then this is how we can call our rest api url now dollar adjust and then you can see here the url so this is our url and then content type headers this is the request header and two things we are we have to pass here two methods one is a success and the failure so in the success what will happen and the failure what will happen so if you'll see here on the success method i have taken data.d so it will give you the response and then uh, uh, now we have the user info contents uh, whatever the values are there in this and then you can see here um, user info dot title so title will give you the display name and then if in the in case of some error occurred then it will show that uh, we are just showing an alert in the error message now let me put in the uh, script editor part so i'll open uh, one of my sharepoint site so you can see here i was talking about the training so you can go through here you will check all the trainings here now this is a sharepoint classic site and you can see here this is the url and I will go and create a page. So I'll go to view all pages. And then you can see here, I have some pages here. So I'll just click on text page, test page. This is a test page. And this is a web part page, uh, not a modern page. And I will click on edit page. So I'll click on add a web part. And then if you'll go down here, media and content, you will see the script editor web part and just click on add. So once you add this script editor up, uh, script editor web part then we can paste our code entirely here so in this case uh, what I'll do is I will just copy the code here you can see here this is uh, the this is the code and uh, what we will uh, what we will do here is I will just copy paste the code here and I will just pass it here I'll just click on insert 
now i will stop editing the page so you can see here i have a button here uh, as i was telling we have taken html button if i'll click on that then it is showing me the display name of this logged in user so whatever the id we are getting that information we are getting here now uh, as i was telling you we can actually get uh, uh, the url here or we can uh, we can in fact we will be able to construct that url which you can use to uh, to get uh, the particular uh, uh, things or the particular result you can see in the browser itself so what i'll do is i'll quickly uh, i want to see the user id so what i'll do here is i will just put an alert here so i will put alert and then we will pass this user id so i want to see uh, the user id here so whatever the user id is there so I just want to see so that we can use actually um, and this we can construct this URL here. So I'll click on insert. I will just submit it. Now you can see here nine is the username. So in this case it is the username is nine. And uh, now you can see here this is the display name. In fact we can actually uh, get the particular URL here. So I will go here. This is the request URI. So this is what we required. So I will go here and I'll put an alert here. So basically we want to retrieve the URL. So our REST endpoint URL so that we'll put in the browser and we'll see how it is appearing. So I'll click on OK and this is the URL. So you can see here. Now this is our REST endpoint. So I will simply go here. I'll put it on this. Now you can see here, you will be able to see the properties, whatever are there on this. For example, you can see here the login name. So if I'll put the login name, then I'll get this result here. So similarly, this is the title. You can see here it is returning the same thing. And uh, there are other things also you can, you will be able to see here. This is the uh, ID. You can see here principal type, which is this one. And then email, if you want to retrieve, just you can have email here so that means in my code if i will say user info dot email then it will give me this email over here so this is how you can uh, work with uh, on the rest api we saw one example there are some more examples on this uh, you can once you download this PDF you will have all this code available also and also I have some more URLs which you can uh, check it and you can see there are a lot of examples which are available on this you can see here SharePoint 2016 cloud operation using REST API and jQuery uh, there are some other things are also there list item cloud operation you can see here so you will get a lot of examples here so I'll put all these relevant examples on on this video description so if you like the video, kindly subscribe to the channel. Uh, just click on subscribe button and you'll get a lot of free videos on this. Uh, you will you will get on Office 365, SharePoint, Azure, Teams, uh, SPFX, all these uh, uh, tutorials you will get it free. So thank you and have a nice day.